Welcome to the DYB Podcast, where each week we share strategies and stories to inspire you to double your business so that you can have financial freedom, time for your family, and make an impact in your community. And now, this week's episode. What happened? So, we did a cabinet project, and it was a very, very, very nice house. And when I walked into the, to the estimate, it's probably 6,000, 7,000 square foot house, and it's completely empty, right? So, I come to find that the owner bought it at an estate sale, and he was flipping it. Right. So he wanted to kind of update the kitchen. The cabinets were yellow. We took them to white. Right. So I send our team in. They do a great job. But I get a call and he's like, hey, there's like these gaps. Right. So I was like, okay, like, no problem. I'll come out. I'll take a look. And when we refinish cabinets, we don't caulk anything because then the caulk will fail. Right. And then it cracks and it doesn't look too great. He's like, no, no, no. I, I, I can't have that. Right. We'll call it Mr. P. All right. So Mr. P is, you know, I, I can't, I can't have this. I'm, I'm like, Mr. P, it's, it's going to look like garbage in a year. He's like, no, I need six weeks. That's it. Right? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, all right, you know, maybe I can do some touch-ups for you. Um, so he's just standing there like with his hands behind his back, like pointing at things. And um, I'm going around with some, some paint and touching things up. And he's like, no, just like shove the paint in that crack. So it kind of fills it in and makes it look smooth. Right. So, you know, he's just kind of pointing all these things out. I don't want to have to you know drag the team back out there. So I was doing everything. And then I put the paint on the countertop. Right. And then he walks over, he's standing next to me with the paint on the countertop, he moves and the paint falls on the floor all over me. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> that sounds like something my cat would do. <laughs> oh. yeah. So, so then, of course, you know, I'm like, oh, geez, we got to clean this up. So I'm, I'm like taking off my shoes, taking off my socks. I rolled my pants like a, a halfway up my calf. We clean everything up, and then he's like, okay, yeah, and then that spot, and that spot, and that spot. So I'm in this <laughs> he like skip a beat. He went right back. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in this like mansion, mansion, and. And yeah. bare feet, without any shoes, doing these these little little touch ups. ups. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, hello and welcome to the DYB podcast. Where our mission is to help you to build million dollar painting businesses so that you can have financial freedom, time for your family, make an impact in your community. With me today is Ron Ramsden. Good morning, Ron. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Very good. Thank you. April and Seth are both traveling at opposite ends of the country, actually northern and southern uh, ends of the country today. So they're, they're not with us. They're, they're away. But today's guest always had the vision to live a life of service. In 2014, he started that journey by joining the Marine Corps and going on to study engineering at Temple University and with failed plans to become a pilot and still trying to figure out what he wanted to be when he grew up. He began working as a contractor and renovating homes, but it was only after a long day of work when he fell asleep on his hands and knees while installing some baseboards, he realized he was not living up to his true potential. This is when he realized he needed to build an organization that is committed to serving others at the highest level possible. Andrew Tomasetti of Paint Philly. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thanks for having me, Steve. Hey, my pleasure. So uh, you've been DYB a while and um, you've been in Mastermind Group, OMG, for some time. And, and we've been coaching one to one, I believe, since April. And you've been making some serious gains and you're an inspiration to others. So I want to thank you for coming on uh, the show and then sharing your story. I believe you're projecting towards what, 1.2, 1.5 this year? Yeah. OK. And uh, how long have you been in business? This uh, as a legitimate business or mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> yeah. this will be our second year. Second year. So second year, you're projecting towards 1.2, 1.5. Fantastic. Take us back to the beginning of uh, starting, beginning the legitimate business. Yeah. So let's see. I, I graduated college and I had a flight contract because I, I enlisted into the Marine Corps Reserve. Um, and to be a pilot, you need to be an officer. So I went to college, did all that fun stuff. And I had this flight contract. I go down to take a flight physical and they're like, oh man, like you have this crazy eye condition. You can never be a pilot. Right. And this is like right when I was graduating. 
Um, and when I was in college, I had a moving company, right? But it was really just, you know, Andrew moving stuff. And my last semester, I was like, well, this is great, but the jobs only last for a day. I'm looking around and I'm like, oh, I could paint the bedroom. So I start this kind of painting side hustle, um, you know, uh, the tail end of college. And I thought I was going to be a pilot. I got disqualified from that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get some second opinion. So I, I fought that. Um, and I did some like crazy eye therapy for about, uh, uh, it was 40 weeks long. And then, you know, back and forth with the military to try and, you know, become a pilot. Didn't work out. And I was like, man, like, I do not love painting. I don't, you know, I don't like installing baseboard. It's cool if you do it, you know, maybe once a week or, you know, once a month, but you know, I think I can build a team. So then I started paint Philly and the rest is kind of history. Awesome. What was the, uh, what's, what's the eye condition that, that you discovered? Yeah. What's that called? It's called, it's called amblyopia. Okay. And what is it? So what amblyopia is, it is a brain eye connection issue. So my left eye is dominant. So when I look at something, uh, my left eye is so much stronger than my right eye. My brain turns off the signals from my right eye. So it's not, you know, we can fix this with a lens because it's a connection issue, not an eyeball issue. Interesting. Okay. All right. Very cool. Thank you. So you've decided not to start the competitor to college hunks moving furniture and stuff and decided to do, uh, you know, the painting company. Uh, we've got this going. We're rolling. What would you say is your target market currently? Okay. That's a really good question because still we're still trying to hone in on that mm -hmm. like i think you've said and a lot of people have said uh, the riches are in the niches right uh we don't do gc work we don't do new construction um we don't really work for investors i've even found it to be a difficult if the homeowner is running the show any sort of new constructions or additions but we do focus on is your residential repaints of course, interior, exterior, cabinet refinishing. Uh, but then what I find is difficult is interior painting is one business. Exterior painting is a business and cabinet refinishing is a business. And you sell them differently, you market them differently, and you produce them differently. You add in the array of different styles and ages of homes in this area, uh, you get every single job is completely custom. So we're still, you know, trying to hone in on that, but residential repaints for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to ask the question that Ron's dying to ask subs or employees. Subs. Go ahead, Ron. You can ask him. Subs. <laughs> yeah. It's all yeah. subs. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I've gone both ways and, and that's why I always ask. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, I was going to hit you in the chat, but uh, I didn't want to keep, you know, blow up the keyboard while we're listening to, to Andrew and I don't, care for multitasking anyway, but I knew, I knew Ron was thinking it. I know Ron is like, so wait, subs are employees. So yeah. cool. What, what mind shift changes have you had to make from when you started to where you are today? What are some of the biggest okay. yeah. shifts? So when I started, when I really started, um, I actually was knocking doors and I bought this program online. It's like, Hey, this is how you build a painting business. It's part of it was knocking on doors. You know, they had another little section on how to sell. And I go in with a bunch of energy and I think I'm going to be the world's best salesperson. Mm -hmm. Not the case. No, <laughs> yeah, not, not the case. Um, and then I found your podcast, Steve, and I listened to mm -hmm. the, uh, I think it's how to connect, build rapport and, increase sales with disc. Right. Mm. Um, and after listening to that and, you know, doing some more research and implementing it, that was huge, um, to sell jobs and to close jobs on the spot. So I think. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Yeah. For those listening or watching, I think that was episode 75 or real close to 75, if not 75. Okay. So you, you heard that you listened, you implemented, and that helped you. That helped you turn around your presentations and helping you to close sales. Okay, fantastic. Well, speaking of implementation, the implementation of what would you say has made the most significant change to your business up to this point? Hmm. Tech. 
tech, absolutely. Having everything zapped together mm -hmm. has been a huge time saver. And I'm not, I try to, I try to be organized, but things get lost in the day to day. Having everything zapped is a huge time saver. Having the, our website where a lead or yeah, a lead can go in and schedule directly on the site, huge time saver. Um, so I think that the tech is why we've been able to grow so quickly and, um, you know, everything still stays fairly organized. Indeed. Get off those, uh, three ply paper. I forget what they're called. That, that's how Ron and I got started way back in the day. We go to back. Staples and buy a stack of those three ply. But what, yeah. what do they call those three ply, not three ply. They're, uh, the duplicates, the carbon copies, yeah, you know, carbon copies. we used to have a stamp. You stamp your business name at the top of it with a big rubber stamp, like ink pads. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah. Ron. Well, question I have is, is you know, we talked about disc and, and how to hone your sales ex experience, and uh, you talked about you know zapping and everything. But where do your customers come from? Are they finding you? You finding them? How are you finding them? Mm. Referrals, Google Ads, organic search, referrals, everything that Steve talks about. That's how you generate re referrals. Mm -hmm. Networking groups, BNI, Instagram was okay. was good for us to get in front of uh, realtors. And then a lot of times the realtors see what you're doing and then refer them or refer you to their clients after they bought a house. Um, okay. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Quick uh, point to that. So Andrew's talking about referrals. He's referring to the DYB system, which is heavily based on how to, you know, generating high value referrals. Now, Andrew, you also mentioned uh, Google ads. And if somebody's going to, uh, invest money online to generate some leads. That's the only one, the only paid source that we recommend. The others, like paid lead sources, we do not, and Facebook ads, we do not recommend because uh, the ROI is not there uh, if you know how to properly measure it. So I just, that quick caveat out there, because some will hear uh, Google ads, Andrew, and they'll lump that in with, you know, maybe Facebook ads are okay too and whatnot. And so I just want to make that clear to kind of protect those listening or watching, not to yeah. uh, make any commitments or plunges. Uh, going down sure. that road, I think so you could you yeah you could you could go from zero to five hundred without any sort of paid advertising. I you could probably even go to zero to a million uh, without any sort of paid and just networking and grassroots. Mm -hmm. For me, I wanted to put a little bit of gasoline on the fire, and that's why right. you know I was like, hey, you know, let's do the Google Ads. We tried Facebook, we could never get Facebook to work. I know one guy who got it to work but it's it wasn't low-hanging fruit for us mm -hmm. and from yep. most of the pe people who i've talked to it doesn't work for them either facebook mm -hmm. so uh you mentioned thank you for that you mentioned um one of the biggest sh uh, uh, changes from implementation was the tech and the automations w let's go ahead and skip to your tech stack what does your tech stack look like what apps are you using to automate the uh, the admin the operations of your company yes yeah, so you come in through our website you schedule directly on the website through acuity i think i could be getting all these programs mixed up sounds right correct me mm -hmm. if i'm wrong steve um comes in through acuity it gets zapped on over to paint scout it gets zapped on over to pipeline deals which is our crm and then it gets zapped on over to quickbooks no, it doesn't get zapped to QuickBooks until they sign. I'm sorry, All right. because we don't need that in there for just a lead. So yeah, it goes to the CRM, it goes to uh, Paint Scout, and then there's one more that sends automated um, text messages and emails. Um, the name I forget the name off the top of my head right now. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what it's called? So the automated emails, uh, active yes. campaign. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Active, active campaign's campaign. great. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then these uh, eliminate like quintuple. What's 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 eight? We had we had Ben Campbell on in, in his flowchart and shared it in OMG. There's like one at one stage. There are eight to ten entries that he doesn't have to do, and it's like the double. It's not double entry. It's quintuple. I don't I don't know what the number is for eight or ten, but it eliminates all that in your mm -hmm. uh, flowchart, right? And so, being that it saves all that time, how many? <clears throat> excuse me. So 1.2, 1.5, we're currently interviewing. We're looking for an admin. We really need an admin right now. Could use one. But you, we've got this point without a full-time admin, 
right? Thanks to all the tech. And uh, if you've got crews out there, do you have a project manager out there delivering paint to them and keeping track of everybody? No. No, sir. So you get to keep that sixty, eighty thousand dollars right in your pocket or reinvest it in the business. Right. Yeah. So if, if we hear you correctly, you're 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 projected towards one point two, one point five, and we're just now bringing on an admin, a full time admin assistant. In fact, we're in the phase of interviewing and, and hiring, and in fact, I think we have an interview uh, later today, right? Maybe after this podcast. Two, Two of them. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. And no project manager. And so there are two major components for this. Uh, one is he's got the tech stack locked in and automated. And then the other one is culture. All right. So Andrew's done a great job of hiring for character, even, even other subs. And they're out there taking care of the customers without him so that he can keep building the business. Right. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head, Steve. How how many sub crews do you have? We have three. What's that look like? Can you just give us a? Yeah, it, look, it looks like three sub crews. Jamie, Jamie's team is three. Ruben's team is four, and Ernesto's team is three. Okay. Yeah, that's what that looks like. I, I find the team members that are a good fit stick around for a long time. We treat them very well, and the ones that are not a good fit, it's very evident. And they usually, or they don't last. Um, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a boot camp back in the Marine days, right? They get washed out pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I don't know. I, I never went, so maybe I'm speaking out of yeah. out of class here. <laughs> so, you, know, you see the Navy SEALs uh, movies and whatnot, and people getting washed out. I just see Marines getting washed out too if they're not a good fit. But yeah, yeah, if they're not a good fit for your culture. Now, speaking of culture, what do you what do you do to cultivate uh, the culture of your team? Yeah, so. We do the group me's, we greet the team, the guys every day. They really like that. And then it's just like mm -hmm. constant encouragement. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that our, our guys, the background that they came from, they were not treated very well. So it, like an extremely skilled painter might've been making $15 an hour, which in my opinion is not acceptable. Like you can't even live on $15 an hour. And especially if you have this, you know, awesome skill and, you know, they just weren't treated right. And I, I typically find if you pay people well and you're not a jerk and you're reasonable, mm -hmm. they, they stick around. It's amazing. And, isn't it? Yeah. And a lot of our guys just want to work and provide a better life for them and their family. And I can give them that opportunity. Like my face. So Jamie, Jamie's been with me since, basically day one. And he's absolutely loved working with us last year. He was able to buy his first house and he was just like ecstatic about that. And knowing that, you know, he's been working for he's mid forties. And after working with us for a year, he can go ahead and do that, that we provide that stability and pay him well enough to, to do that. That really makes me ha happy and, and proud and yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Way to go and uh, way to lead your team. So, and you have to, uh, especially if you're going to get to, you know, as far as you've gotten 1.2, 1.5 without, you know, key personnel in the field. Right, right Ron? So, so Andrew, what, what do you, because I, I, I currently use subcontractors also. What do you, what do you find or where have you found your subcontractors? Mm, all referrals. Yeah. They're all referrals. Yeah. Um, where do you find yours? Uh, I did. I did find on an Indeed ad. Uh, I've interviewed a few from Indeed. Paint store was a couple of them, and the same with the same that you had spoken is uh, some will stick around and some won't, and you can weed those out fairly quick. And the you treat them right, you pay them right, you pay them when you tell them you got to pay them. That's a lot more than a lot of people do in how they treat their subcontractors. Very easy to become yeah. a shining star in a subcontractor's world. Yes, and they do I, quality I, work. They're great painters. They just might not be want to run a business. So. Right, exactly. Yeah, all of our all of our, all of our guys with referrals. We I even ask my team leads if they know anybody who may be interested in working for us, and we do a little bit of a bonus if they're like, yeah, and it works out. So, cool. Yeah, Andrew, what are some of your favorite books that have made the most significant impact in your business? Ooh, great question. So. I have a long list. Awesome. I've always been a little bit of an entrepreneur. So, 
even in college before the, the painting business, um, I was always listening to audio books and, you know, getting into all this good stuff. Rich Dad, Poor Dad kicked it off for me after I, I read that. Yes. Yes. After I read that, it was game over. <laughs> yeah. That was one of my um, first as well. Yeah. That's a really good book. Um, so Rich Dad, see bombs, Dad, The Rich Don't Work for Money. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Um, for anyone listening, you should just go read it. Um, just go read it. Yeah. Yeah. Just go read it. Uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Four Hour Work Week. I'm a huge Tim Ferriss fan. Um, the E-Myth is really good. Good to Great is fantastic. And I read Good to Great before I even started getting into any of your stuff, Steve. And you see so many parallels between what they talk about in Good to Great and the things that you teach. Mm. Good to Great is a really, really good book. The way it's written, the research that they do. Um, another highly recommended one. There we go. There's a visual for everybody on YouTube. Yes. And it's, it's funny. I was painting, um, from my, I read a, I have a really good friend for his aunt Betty. I was painting for, and she owns a small business and I saw a good to great on her shelf in the room I was painting. And I said, Hey, I got to check that out. And, uh, <laughs> good book. What else? Um, how to win friends and influence people is good. Think and grow rich influence. Um, and it's, Influence ties right on in and to the website and, you know, all of that. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, those are some good books. Okay. And then uh, the, the one there, just in case we don't skate over it, you mentioned Influence. That's the name of the book, Influence by Dr. Robert Cialdini. Uh, grab. Here's, here's the latest version. It's a great big yellow and purple uh, one now. Fun fact is it's like twice as thick as the original, but uh, so are the pages. Well done. Way to influence us on a bigger book there, Dr. Cialdini. But awesome, awesome book. This That was the first book that Rob, Bob Berg told me to read. And it's an absolute game changer. Sales, marketing, and everything. So after you've read it, you look, you look back at the DYB system and you're like, oh, that's why. And oh, that's why. <laughs> right. And it all comes together. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So now, Steve, what books do you recommend? Oh, these behind me. <laughs> and then the list of 50 in the cafe to get started. <laughs> but Influence is definitely right up there, you know, and then uh, hopefully I've distilled many of the principles from all these books into into my book as, as simply as possible. You know, try to make it a real easy read uh, for everybody. But, but yeah, all these behind me and uh, so many. Right. And we encourage a book a week and everybody should be able to read a book a week, if, especially if you're using Audible. Right. Automobile University. Mm -hmm. Just pounding through them before you know it, you'll have an MBA within a year or two. And then after that, MBAs will be coming up to you asking for asking for advice. You just keep pounding away at them. So, yeah. So, Andrew, I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I know you're generally a private guy. And so I want to thank you for, for coming out, for sharing, because your story uh, is going to inspire others who are out there in the grind, who are trying to figure this out, who are going through struggles and troubles. But by, by you coming out, uh, it's really going to help many others out there. Now, is there a question I should have asked or a final point you'd like to make? So I, I came across this um, little, like a Chinese proverb, you could say, right? Mm. And, and for me, you know, when the pilot thing didn't work out, that was like a huge, very, very, very detrimental. And I remember right when that happened, I, I bought my house and I started the painting company. And I remember laying in bed thinking, geez, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my mortgage this month. And I heard this passage the other day and I was like, wow, th th this is great. So uh, basically the way it goes is there was this old farmer, right? He worked his crops his whole life and he had the horse, this horse, right? And the horse, you know, was like what kind of drove the farm. He needed this animal to be able to till the fields, right? And one day the horse ran away. So this was a huge detriment to him. His neighbors come over. They say, what bad luck do you have? And the farmer says, well, we'll see, right? So the next morning, the horse returned, but the horse brought two more horses with it. So his neighbors say, wow, how wonderful. Not only did your horse return, but you got two more. What great fortune do you have? And the farmer says, well, we'll see. So then the next day, his son tries to ride one of the horses. And 
he got thrown off the horse, he broke his ankle, and then the neighbors came over again and they said, wow, now your son can't help you with your farm. What terrible luck do you have? And he says, well, we'll see. The next week, a war broke out. The military officials came to visit and um, they saw that his son had a broken leg, so they couldn't draft him. Uh, his neighbors come over and they say, wow, what, what great news. You must be so happy. The man smiles to himself and says, well, we'll see. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is so cool. And uh, so as far as what the future holds, we'll see. Right? <laughs> That's it. Awesome. Well, again, Andrew, thank you so much for taking time to come on, Ron. Thank you for hanging. Thank and you uh, for everybody, for everybody listening on the podcast or watching on uh, social and YouTube, we uh, want to continue to encourage you guys to dream bigger, hustle smarter. You've got this. Have a great day. Take care. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If this was helpful, please share it with a friend to help inspire them to double their business. Again, this is April Burnett. Steve and I are the founders of Burnett Painting and DYB Coach. We want to take a moment and thank you for making us the most rated podcast dedicated specifically to painting contractors. To celebrate, we want to help you break through to higher success. So Steve is now giving away free strategy calls. Just click the link below in the show notes that says free strategy call. There are only a couple of openings on his calendar each week. So get your free call with Steve now. Thank you so much for listening. And remember to dream big, hustle smarter. You've got this.